half your class just on meteorology. I would have. It was interesting. We had to like plug in the data in old, old school. This is going to date me as far as how old I am uh, on old Apple IIe computers. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> I think that was before my time. With the, with, with the, with the green screens. <laughs> that might have been before my time. Probably. <laughs> because when I went to school, there were no computers with green screens. Warning, the following show will spoil the hell out of George R.R. R. Martin's A Song of Ice and Fire books and the TV show A Game of Thrones. Also, you're probably going to find a fuck ton of bad language. The explicit tag is there for a reason. Death and boobies, 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 death and boobies. Welcome back to the Ironwood Network Book Club. I'm your host, Lady Wyvern. As always, I am with Maester Ironwood today. Widow's, Widow Wolf Spain, unfortunately, is out with the flu. So so to... she says, the flu. Oh, she looks and sounds horrible. So she's in quarantine. So maybe she's going to die. I hope not. The flu's killing people this year. Lots of them. Yes. Well, I hope it doesn't take her. My life would be devastating <laughs> without her. <laughs> life would be boring. Now, this also means that the terrifying troll that has horrified Sir Malfi is not here in studio. Which means Sir Malfi has the run of the studio today. And he will be making an And will be making no multiple appearances, I'm sure, instead of cowering in a corner somewhere. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so you you may hear Sir Malfi or us chastising Sir Malfi on multiple occasions throughout the recording. Yes. Needless <laughs> to say, though, it, it will definitely be a shorter recording than normal. Uh, yeah. Not, a, not as many tangents. That's no. That's going to help. Yeah. Uh, the editing process will probably be pretty nice. Yeah, but it probably won't be as funny. It might be as funny if you're just interested in A Song of Ice and Fire and not in everything else that gets discussed. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. Uh, before we start, I just want to take a minute and thank Ben for coming on on the last episode. Yes, that was awesome. breaking down Brand 4 with us. That was great. That was a lot of fun. Yeah, it definitely was a lot of fun. It was a lot of fucking editing. Holy shit. It was over three hours of recording. Three hours of recording. Took me about three nights to actually edit that shit down. So, yeah, it took a while. But I think it turned out... Yeah, I think it turned out really good. Um, How long was it it, after you were all said and done? uh, About an hour and 51 minutes. So, it was a long one. So, congratulations to all you who slogged your way through that (laughs) hour and 51 minute discussion (laughs) of Brand 4. Uh, That's a a good accomplishment. (laughs) Right. If you would like to join us on a future episode to break down a chapter of your choice, uh, head on over to patreon.com slash ironwood and sign up at the $5 a month level, and uh, we will invite you on to break down a chapter with us. Ben will actually be back for a second episode. Which one is that? That's going to be Eddard 10. Okay, so that's his fever dream. That's, that's Ned's fever dream in the Black Cells, where we yeah. learned about the Tower of Joy. That was the episode that Ben originally wanted to do, but he wanted to be on earlier, just so people realized we were actually serious about actually having people on the show with us. Right. So uh, we told him, hey, yeah, we'll let you do both. Why not? Sure. All right. So what are we breaking down today, lady? It's Eddard. I don't know what number it is. Eddard 5. Eddard 5. <laughs> and Sir Malfi makes his second appearance on the recording studio <laughs> already. Yeah, but he didn't make any noise that time he did. Yeah, he did because he brushed into the microphone, oh, which did causes he? that <laughs> sound That's on funny. the recording that I have to try to find a way to edit out. And it's oftentimes in the middle of other people talking, so it can't be edited out. Well, we'll figure it out. Three. <laughs> Are we going to count them? I might just count them, just for my own sanity. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) I might just. So, I guess I will be doing the synopsis for Eddard 5. You're so much better at them than I am. I will keep it short and sweet and simple. Uh, So, first off, we start with Ned meeting with Grandmaster Pycelle who 
puts on a really good performance of being a doddering old fool. Yes, he does. But is not a doddering old fool. No. Four. <laughs> Five. <laughs> Doddering old fool. Yeah, so he's not a doddering old fool. He offers Ned some iced mil- milk with ice and honey. Sweet milk. Yeah, sounds very weird it does to me. It very weird. Then again, when I was a kid, I used to add sugar to my milk. My mom used to yell at me. <laughs> Milk's got a ton of sugar in it by itself. Don't ask me why. I saw it on TV once, so I figured I'd try it. Okay. Anyway. Yeah. I mean, I like to add sugar to my milk, too. It's just in the form of strawberry powder. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, this was straight up King Sugar. Yep. So uh, Ned and Grandmaster Pycelle discuss John Aaron's death, and they Grandmaster Pycelle tells him that John Aaron had borrowed a book from him shortly before his death, which was basically a history and genealogy of all the great houses of Westeros. Yep. Which is foreshadowing to the importance of that book. Right. Ned wants to borrow it. Great Mr. Pike tells him, sure, yeah, I'll, let you, you know, I'll, I'll dig it up and find it for you. Whatever. I do have to say that when he called in the young serving girl, I was half expecting him to, like, smack her ass or something on the way out. He just seems like the kind of creepy old guy to do I that. I was really expecting him to, like, grab her ass. Yeah, exactly. Be- yep. Because what kind of creepy old guy like that has young, young kitchen hands like that and calls him sweet girl <laughs> a dirty or old summer ma- child a dirty old man who bangs young whores yeah so yeah yep creepy yes great base myself is very creepy and who knows what kind of allegiances right exactly like he's obviously not like robert's guy because he didn't come in with robert like john no. aaron did and like so Stannis where did, he did come from, and then? well the citadel chooses oh, okay those lying piece of shit gray rat maesters at the Citadel <laughs> choose who the Grand Maester is. So Ned leaves his meeting with Grand Maester Pycelle and meets up with Arya, who is practicing balancing on one toe. Any toe. Any toe <laughs> at the top of a stone staircase. A spiral stone staircase. Seems like a very bad idea well, for somebody know, as clumsy as Arya. I know, but sh- she's so bound and determined to be... A water dancer. Yeah. Yeah. And Cyril Pharrell told her that a, a true water dancer can balance on one toe forever. Yeah. So she's balancing on one toe, or trying to. On the top of a staircase. Yeah, and, and it's pointed out that the stone floor has shredded her bare feet. Yep. Because she decided not to wear shoes. She has to stand on her toes. She can't do it with shoes on. It's hard to stand on one toe with your shoes on. Exactly. And she's flailing wildly. Yeah. (laughs) I just imagine her, like, doing, like, the backstroke. Yeah, exactly. Trying to fucking not fall down. Yeah. It's got to be a sight to see. And Ned's got to be like, what the fuck? Right. And so they have a discussion about Bran and things that Bran can do. Or can't do. Or can't do. So Bran can't be a knight. Yep. Ned decides not to sugarcoat it for yeah. Arya. Tells him, nope, can't be a knight. But he could be, you know, the lord of a house. Yep. He could sit on Robert's council or whoever is the king at that point. He could sit on their council, which would be Joffrey. I don't know if I want to be on Joffrey's I council. I want to be on Joffrey's yeah, council. Yeah, no. Ned tells, this is one of my favorite parts of the book, is Ned tells Arya that, well, first... Ned's like, well, Bran could be, he could build castles, like Bran the Builder, and yep. things like that. And Arya's like, can I build castles? And she, can I do fun like, stuff? And no. he's like, no, you're going to have to marry a dude and, like... Your sons can be, do that. Be his baby factory. Yeah. And she's like, no, no, dude, that ain't me. <laughs> that ain't happening. <laughs> I'm glad from a young age she knows what she wants. She's not... Yeah, she doesn't fit into this world. Yeah, no, she's very more advanced. Yeah, and she's she's the, what the she she's wants. the fir- she's Westeros's first feminist. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> she's decided she ain't gonna marry a dude and be his baby factory. She's gonna be a water dancer and probably stab people. And which that does come to fruition. It does. The water dancer, not so much, but the stabbing people, absolutely. Yep. Mm-hmm. Oh, I'm poisoned. 
And so as he meets her, Ned leaves Arya. He meets with Littlefinger. Yep. And in his tower, right? Yes, in his tower, and they discuss various things. I think the most important thing that Ned and Littlefinger discuss is. Littlefinger reminding Ned that the smartest thing he's done since getting off his horse in King's Landing is not trusting, is not trusting Littlefinger. Yeah. So that's some foreshadowing and foreboding because Ned's basically being forced to trust Littlefinger by right. Catelyn Tully because she's in love with Littlefinger. Ned should have really taken that to heart. Yeah, he really should have remembered to not trust Littlefinger because yeah. that's going to end up biting him in the neck. <laughs> <laughs> With a big sword. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> and that is where we leave things. Yep. That is the chapter. It's basically just a lot of talking. And- it's a lot of talking. It's a lot. It's it's a it's an exposition heavy chapter. Where I don't know what get, that word means. <laughs> where you get information without action happening. Oh, okay. So exposition is like you're being told things. Right. And so you don't get a whole lot of action. Like it's a lot of. It's a whole lot of Ned sitting yeah. and talking and not actioning, yeah, which can make for boring chapters, but I think we get some good information in this one. Right. So why don't you get us started with what you would like to talk about, starting at the beginning, hopefully. Well, I'm not Widow. I'm going to start at the beginning. <laughs> <laughs> oh, before, before we do start, I would like to... In honor of Widow and her, and her potential <laughs> She's death. She's not dead yet. And her potential death <laughs> in, in memoriam. <laughs> um, this would have been a great chapter for her to be here. Because, for the weather report? Because <laughs> there's a serious need of a weather report. It is fucking hot. Yes. In King's Landing. Like, so fucking hot that the the small folk... Are not sleeping in their hovels. They're just... I mean, their houses. Having... <laughs> They're sleeping outside by the river. Yeah. Because it's the only place where, like, you can feel, like, a slight breeze. Yeah. That's how hot it is. I can just imagine swarms and just dozens and hundreds of people just laying... Oh, thousands. Just yeah. Li- it looked like Jonestown the day after. I don't get that. Oh, Okay. <laughs> that's that's Jim Jones and his the, the, drink the Kool Aid. You heard the expression "Don't drink the Kool Aid." I've heard the expression. Well, that's yes. because at Jonestown, he convinced all of his followers and forced some of the other followers to drink the Kool Aid. But it wasn't really Kool Aid. It was oh. the, it was like the ghetto cheap version of Kool Aid and die. Oh, I okay, yeah. yeah so that's, I know what you're talking about. So that's about. Jonestown. So it's okay. just like a, like hundreds of people just like laying dead on the ground. Yeah. <laughs> I, I don't. I don't imagine though that having this mass of people just like spooning each other down the river is any cooler than sleeping in your own bed though. No, but he said that there's a breeze at least. Right. And these people who live in like flea bottom and shit like they're like probably don't have they don't have like, fans. Windows and- <laughs> They definitely don't have fans. Like, we discussed fans on a previous episode, and now the rich people probably have servants just fan them yep. with palm fronds or whatever, but I don't think the small folk have that. They're no. probably the ones waving the palm fronds. <laughs> yeah, and whatever s- slight breeze comes back at home. Yeah, just exactly. For. Where they're just burning up more energy and making themselves hotter by having to actually do the yeah. fanning. So, probably not helpful. I'd rather just sleep in the water. Permanently, sure. Well, you know, it's cooler. Yeah, it's very cool when you die. The water's not that cold. No, but you fall asleep in water, you're probably going to drown. Nah, I make sure I'm propped up pretty well. (laughs) (laughs) Plus, it's a river, so it has a current. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, so you end up like, you fall asleep at King's Landing. And you end so up I make myself a little at, like, tub of rocks like inside town. the water, so I just stay inside my little tub. <laughs> okay, all right. I'm, gl- I'm glad you figured out the logistics of sleeping in the river to cool off. That's fantastic. Okay. <laughs> the weird logistics, I'm okay with. <laughs> yeah. Outdoor concert tricks with Lady Wyvern. <laughs> How to stay cool in the middle of summer. Right. But yeah, so 
very, 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 very hot at King's Landing. Like, Ned mentions that he can feel his silks yeah. stuck to his body. And they were, they were, which, they were talking about how um, it always seems to be hotter the summer before just the before winter. winter comes. Right, even though it's technically not true. Technically not true, but it always, says feels, it always feels like it is. So, winter is coming, obviously. Dun dun dun! Once again, we get the we get the roundabout backwards, <laughs> not quite there version of winter is coming. <laughs> yes, yes, we do. Yes. Well, it's like that here. It always feels like it gets really warm just before the snow hits. At least I think so. And that's because otherwise it's six degrees outside and it can't snow because it's too cold. So it has to warm up so it can snow. That's true. <laughs> right now it's thirty one degrees out and it's raining. Raining. So. AC raining. Yeah. Take a meteorology. Lovely. Anyway, yes. So, I think that's going to do it for the weather report. I, I can't justify talking about the weather any more than that. <laughs> <laughs> I completely understand I am that's, not, I'm not a weather man. <laughs> no, that's widow's thing. <laughs> I did take a meteorology class in high school, but I'm not a weather man. Half your class just on meteorology. I would have. It was interesting. We had to like plug in the data in old... Old school, this is going to date me as far as how old I am, uh, on old Apple IIe computers. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> I think that was before my time. With the, with, the, with, the, with the green screens. That might have been before my time. Probably. <laughs> because when I went to school, there were no computers with green screens. Okay, so we're done with the weather report. Let's move on to more important things. We can say that this week because Widow's not here. Yeah. So we so. can say that the weather's not that important. <laughs> it's important, it's just not. It's not part of the story. It's well, it was part of the story. It is part of the story. So how old is Grand Maester Pycelle, really? Because he was talking about how he's been there since before, I want to say Aegon. He's been a maester for a long, long time. Yeah. yeah. But it, I, don't, I don't trust the fucking maesters, so I don't. That's kind of ironic, only because you are a maester. I know, I know, right? I don't trust myself. <laughs> what can I say? Well, at least you're honest about it, I guess. <laughs> you don't know where your own loyalties lie. Do yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you just do whatever works for you. They so you're Littlefinger. The, they lie at the Citadel. So you're like Littlefinger. Yeah. I'm climbing the chaos ladder. <laughs> yeah, you climb that ladder. <laughs> See how far you get. But yeah, Grandmaster Pycelle, he seems like he's probably like in his 60s or 70s, I would assume. Yeah. Something like I that. I imagine something a little older. But then again, I'm also imagining but that's because he's playing Maester Pycelle from the TV show. Right. Well, he's also playing it up that he's like this feeble minded. Oh, he's absolutely playing it up. Yeah. So that's why I'm thinking like in his 60s or 70s and yeah. kind of like aging himself up the way he acts. Right. To act like he's like his 80s or 90s or whatever. He can walk a lot faster than he really puts out. Yeah, he seems like, he definitely seems like younger than like Maester Eamon, for right. sure. Right, yeah, absolutely. Who's like legit old and... Yeah, dies of old age. And legit dies of old age, exactly. So... Yeah. So, John, uh, John Ned went to Maester Pycelle to find out what Lord Aaron wanted before he died. Yep, and also how he died. Yep, and how he died. Because the maesters are the ones who take care of the sick people. Yeah. I mean, keep the sick people sick. <laughs> <laughs> or just kill the sick people. Or just kill the sick people. <laughs> right. So, the night before he got, before Lord Aaron got sick, he went and asked for a, a book. The book was on the lineage of all the, all the families, all the big families yep. in Westeros. Yep. So, and then the next morning he's sick, and then he dies a couple days later. Yeah. It, it's it's not a big coincidence at all, really. No, I, I don't I, <laughs> I don't know how some people don't see the connection. Yeah, you kind of have to willfully ignore that, unless you just don't know that John Aaron went there looking for that book, right? I mean, it's probably not common knowledge right. that he went to Grandmaster Pycelle. Well, there's eyes everywhere. And ask for that book. 
Right. Well, that's fine. Um, unless there's some people who suspected what John Aaron was looking for. Right, exactly. And but poison could... is a woman's weapon. Yes. So, so that leaves us with two possibilities. And one just mis- one just decided to up and go to Dragonstone with their children at the time he was dying. Cersei. When John Aaron was dying? Um, going to the rock. The rock. Sorry. I Why did like, I say Dragonstone? I have no idea why you said Dragonstone. Probably because Stannis decided to up and go okay, to Dragonstone. That's pro- <laughs> yeah, that's why. Okay, yeah. She went to the rock with her father and yes. her kids and just took off while he was dying instead yes. of staying with the king. Yep, on her way to, on her way to Castro the Rock. <laughs> yep. Yep. I think agreed. she was running, maybe? If she had something to do with John Aaron's death, maybe. Well, the only other person who probably could have poisoned was Lysa, and why would she do that? Why, indeed. Why would Lysa... Do you think she'd have motive to do it, or do you think think that she was too love-struck with the old man to actually do it? Alright, so let me give you the my rundown on Lysa Aaron. Okay. This is going to be spoilers full. Okay. But this is my rundown on Lysa Aaron. Lysa Aaron in no way loves John Aaron. Lysa Aaron is younger than Catelyn, and married to, like, a 90-year-old dude. By choice or by... By force. Okay. Her dad forced her to do it. Okay. Lysa has, since as long as we know of her life, been in love with a certain other person. That's also in love with her sister. That is in love with her sister. Yes. And has had relations, shall we say. She's known the other person, Littlefinger, biblically, shall we say. <laughs> Does it say that in the book? No, that's that's what I'm saying. Oh, did they? Did they? Did the? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It, yeah. Yeah. We we know for a fact that, like, for instance, Littlefinger thought he was banging Catelyn before he was forced to leave River Run, but in fact, he was drunk enough that it was actually Lysa that, oh. that he banged, and he, to this day, he still thinks it's it was Catelyn. Oh, but really? Lysa got knocked up from that. And was forced to take the uh, the what, the moon tea or whatever. Oh, force an abortion. Force an abortion by Hoster Tully, and then Littlefinger was forced to leave River Run and so go back to his home. He was forced to leave, but he doesn't know that he slept with the wrong sister. No, he still thinks it's Catelyn. So why does he think he got kicked out of? Because he because he challenged Brandon to a duel and oh, almost got and killed. <laughs> Over Catelyn. Wait, so he had he had sex with Lysa on his sick bed? Yeah. With open Well, it was after he was healing. Okay, I just imagine him covered in bandages trying you I was gonna say you can't be on top when you're covered in bandages like No, that. probably not, but she can be on top. So she took advantage of him. No, I'm assuming that but, they both wanted to do it because he would he he was thinking it was Catelyn. She knows his little finger. Right. So they're both in a way in their minds getting what they want. Right. So, but uh, wrong on both sides. Right. Exactly. Just so wrong on both sides. I don't think Lysa likes John Aaron. I mean, maybe she like likes him as a person, but right. she's not really all that enthralled about being married to the guy. That's right, because John Aaron was basically a father to Ned and Robert. Right. Right. Okay. So yeah, he's definitely older. He's definitely okay. older. I keep the age ages kind of throw me yeah. off because they don't say same numbers much except for the children here. Right. Yep. Exactly. So, so and we do know that Lysa is younger than Catelyn. Catelyn. That's really all we know about her age. That's a horrible marriage to be forced into. Yeah, exactly. So, and she's been <laughs> whatever. She's been having stillbirths the entire time except for Except for Robert Aaron. Robert Aaron. Yes. Who's the weakest piece of shit to yes. ever exist in Westeros. Right. Which leads you to believe that either the he is so weak and sick because because John Aaron is old and decrepit and, and his, his sperm, sperm don't is... swim anymore. Yeah. <laughs> or they swim, they just got crooked tails. Yeah, they're deformed <laughs> or whatever. <laughs> well, you know, as men age, uh, they can father children up until the day they die. Yes. Unless it's just the seed is not yeah, so strong. It's not so strong. Yes, exactly. That's exactly where I was going. <laughs> but um, the other option, that the far more likely option, I think, given... Robert Aaron being a sickly young child, 
being that he's like fucking tiny. He's short. He's very short. Yeah. For his age. I think that he is Littlefinger's child. So you think Lysa and him had consensual sex again later? Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Because remember that the only reason that the Littlefinger even came to King's Landing to be in a position of power is because Lysa convinced John Aaron to bring him to King's Landing. Oh! oh. Bring my fuck buddy over, yeah, honey! Exactly, yeah, exactly, exactly, yep. Yeah. Uh, I'm really tired of your 90-year-old penis. Can you please bring my fuck buddy down? <laughs> Look, we won't give you the horns and cuck you that much, but I need a little something-something. <laughs> oh. And so I Littlefinger just does what he has to do to stay Yeah, in so I'm fairly certain because Littlefinger is mentioned to have been like a sickly child. They did mention that Lysa has a number of stillbirths. Right, which is probably which is probably the anything that John Aaron pregnant like his seed is probably not like, that strong. Basically not viable. So yeah. she just ends up with stillbirths from it. And he doesn't have any other children from previous nope. book five relationships? Nope. Okay. No, nope. she he, Robert Robert is his quote unquote only child. And probably not even his and child. Pro- yeah, I don't think it's his. I'm pretty certain that he's Robert Little Aaron Finger. is Littlefinger's child. Do you child. think Littlefinger knows that R- Little Robert is his? I don't know, because it's pretty clear in Book 5, Dance with Dragons, that Littlefinger is basically poisoning Robert to get him out of the way so he can take over the veil. So either Littlefinger is the coldest motherfucker in well, the world. Well, we know he's the coldest motherfucker. Yeah, but there's a difference between being Littlefinger and, like, poisoning your own child to death. Right. Well, he never makes any inclination in the show or the books that he's a father type figure. Right. He wants what he wants. Well, he's he going to go for it. He plays no it up he as takes. he's Sansa's father. Because she goes under the name of uh, what's her name? Elaine. Yeah. As his, as his as lowborn daughter. Yeah. But but he does it because he has to, not because right. It's it's yeah. their cover, so that that yeah. people don't know who she is. Yeah. So I I really but don't think he's I, a fatherly type. Anyways. Yeah, and I I don't think that he knows that he would be Robert's father. If he can do math, if he can count coppers, he can do the math. Well, I mean, maybe he thinks that there's a possibility. Right. Right. Because you have to know that there's a possibility, but. Well, there's always a possibility if you stick it in there. Right, exactly. So. But I just don't think he realizes that he probably is Robert He has to be really thick then to... Father. For everything else he pays so much attention to, he'd have to be really thick not to... Or or just ignoring it completely. Or maybe he is that cold and would kill his bastard son. Probably would. I wouldn't put it past him. To, I put him, put it to past get him, him out of the way. So he can have what he wants. So he can have, well, so that way he could have, like, a highborn son with, he was hoping, Lady Catelyn, but maybe with a young, nubile Sansa Stark. That's disgusting. Just saying. I, I know. It's, but it's if disgusting. Teen, if teenage Lysa Aaron. Or Lysa Tully can be wed to ninety-year-old John I Aaron. Know. Then teenage Sansa Stark can be married could to be the married forty-year-old forty-year-old Littlefinger. It's still disgusting. Oh, I agree, absolutely, but certainly a possibility. Yeah. So I'm not sure whether or not he knows that he's Robert Aaron's father. I think he is Robert Aaron's father, and either he is unaware and killing him anyway, or trying to kill him anyway. Right. Or he's aware and he is one cold fucking asshole. Yeah, if Lysa's having so many stillbirths and uh, miscarriages, I, I would assume that Robert, de- little Robert does not come from the same gene pool. Right, or else it would have been another yeah. fucking stillbirth. Yeah, exactly. Which, which is why she keeps the child so close to her and she's right. fucking psychotic over the yeah. child. Looney bin. Looney bin style. Yeah. Also, she might realize that it's Littlefinger's child. And she's and afraid someone's going to kill him. She's afraid that somebody might find out. And that's why she's very, like, keep him very close and... Close, close enough and that he's still sucking on her tit at ten years old. Yeah, I mean, well, I mean, you know, guys, you know... A guy can suck on titties... His whole freaking life, I know. Age. <laughs> I know. 
I know, but there's got to be this time in between where he's got he's got to not do it. <laughs> there just has to be. Otherwise, there's a problem. <laughs> yeah, from like you know three to thirteen. No sucking on titties. Thirteen still a little too young. Fourteen <laughs> to twenty. So from like three to thirteen, no sucking on titties. Once you hit 14, anything after that, better be elective. To, then, then you can go back to sucking on some titties. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, Grandmaster Picel tells tells Ned the story of John Aaron being sick, John Aaron dying, how he bravely tried to save his life. I don't think he tried really hard. But once he decided, once he decided that John Aaron was too far gone, uh, he decided to ease his passing and gave him the milk of the poppy. So he killed him, essentially. Yeah, he killed him. I mean, he was a, Grand Maester Picel is the Grand Maester. Yeah. And he's to be trusted. And he says that John Aaron was already on his way out. Now, the milk of the poppy, they basically use it to let them slip into a coma and then... Essentially, yes. Yeah, let their body shut down Poppy, so it's basically like an opioid. Yeah. So, so yeah. So, like, yeah. think heroin or any other opioid. I was thinking more like Roxanol, because that's what we use at the nursing home. Whatever. <laughs> any opioid is the legal. same idea, because opioids come from poppy. Yeah. So, you just have to eat, like, a shit ton of poppy bagels. I like lemon poppy seed muffins. <laughs> you, eat, like, you eat, like, 50 or 60 of them in one sitting, I'll and you might get a little high. <laughs> <I'll be good. laughs> Your stomach might burst, literally, right. but you get a little high. Right. <laughs> Well, you know. So he gave him the milk of the poppy, and he slipped into a coma and well, died not, the but, next morning. The, he 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 was he had enough sense in him before he went unconscious to tell the king and his wife one thing: Lysa, wife, or Lysa. Okay, because I was going to say Cersei, Cersei's was gone. gone. Right, because Ned inquires, "Well, was the yeah. queen there when he said this thing?" No. But no, she wasn't. That's what we learned. That she was on her way to Casterly Rock. Yep. With Tywin. And, and her Joffrey children. and Tommen and Marcella. But he has he has the, the energy to tell the king and Elisa that the seed he kept saying the name Robert and that the seed is strong. So he could have been talking about little Robert or he could have been talking about most King people Robert. Just, most people just assume he was telling like, like, because like we know Robert thinks of little Robert as a weakling. Yes. And so most people think that it was John Aaron assuring him that the seed is strong, he'll be fine, he'll be able to be a leader of the Vale, he'll be able to be... And not that the Robert, the your seed is stronger than you think and these and are not your children. Right, exactly. Yeah. You're, if, if Joffrey was yours, he'd have black hair. Yep. Because that's what the book's going to end up telling us once Ned gets his hands on it and figures out what's going on. Yep. Yeah, I, I think that if maybe Catelyn had hung around a couple extra days, that she probably would have pieced this all together like right during this first conversation and been like, oh, that's it. Problem solved right there. Well, if she paranoid enough, she probably would have seen it. Yeah. But she left already, didn't she? I know, she? she did. Yeah. Yeah, she's on her way to go um, kill the Stark family. <laughs> but that's what we see her doing. <laughs> I, had, I had to think about that for a second. That's what we see her like, doing that. She's taking, t- she's taking Tyrion hostage that's and, Lannisters. and killing, yeah, killing the Stark family because yeah. that starts the war that kills the Stark family. Yeah. So... She's on her way to kill the Stark family. Her her life's dream accomplished. Yeah. Killing the Stark family. <laughs> yeah. It, too bad it just takes her children with, with well, them. They're the Stark family. But she loves her children. She loves Bran. That's true. She let go of all the rest of them in her heart already. Oh, that's true. She can't let go of Bran. Yeah, but she can't let go of Bran. Why? For some reason. Maybe Bran's... Some- I don't know what it is with Bran and her. It, could Bran not be Ned's? That'd be weird for it to be Bran because he's in the middle. So? Like, he's the middle of their children. So? Like, what was he she? had a one-night stand. With who? At where? True. Like, I'm pretty sure nobody in Winterfell yeah. is banging Ned's wife. Yeah, no, they die real quick. Yeah. <laughs> That's a good way to get yourself to that fucking chopping block that Night's Watch guy went to. Uh, he's, <laughs> he's not more Tully than... Than the others, though. So I don't, I don't know what her fixation is with Bran because yeah, he's not, he's not even her youngest than, boy. No, that's, that's Rickon. Rickon. So he's the baby. Mm-hmm. So I don't know what it is with Bran. Like there must have, like she must have been 
going through something like traumatic like the seven years ago when Bran was either she was either pregnant with Bran or Bran was just like a baby. Right. And developed like a big attachment to him as kind of like a comfort piece for her. Right. Like that's the only thing I can think of as to why she's this stuck on Bran. And not the rest and of her not children. And the other children. Right. Because like Rob's her firstborn. Yeah. Sansa's is her firstborn's daughter and more like her than any of the other kids. Yeah. And Rickon is the baby. Yeah, and Arya is too much like Ned for it. Right, yeah. Arya is the, is the actual Stark. <laughs> mm. So I don't know. I don't know what it is, but that's the only thing I can think of is that she went through something about the time that she was pregnant with or had just had Bran and became very attached to him as something to like provide her comfort and support. Yeah, so much like Lysa and little Robert. Yeah, exactly. Only not as creepy. <laughs> Only not as creepy. We hope not as creepy. I mean, we don't know. It could be just as creepy. <laughs> I don't. It could be creepier. All right, so what's going on next? Um, okay, so they're copying us. He's Ned wants to borrow the book. Yes, and he can't find it for some reason. Well, he doesn't go look for it. He's like, I've got it laying around here somewhere. Uh, I'll make sure you get a copy of it. Right, get a copy of it. Get the only copy the because only they only copy. write one. Right. They have write all these books by hand at this point in time. Well, yeah, but the Citadel might be, like, making, like, multiple copies. Like, they probably got, like, multiple scribes. Yeah, but then he'd have to send to the Citadel for another copy, and it's not like he has a library card where he can just go check out whatever book he wants. No, but they could have somebody bring it over in, like, four days. <laughs> you know, it, it, they, it, they could get there, but... Yeah. So, Ned wants the book. Pycelle's going to get it for him. So, Ned's like, all right, well, this milk is weird, so peace. I'm out of here. Yeah, it's a little too <laughs> sweet for him. And then it's just too, it's too hot for yeah. him. He wants to go change. Okay, so Ned leaves Grandmeister Pycelle. Yep. And he's heading back to his tower, yeah. and he finds his youngest daughter acting like a boy on the stairwell. And he's like, alone one time. Covered in scrapes, her feet are all cut up, flailing her arms, trying to stand on one foot, let alone one toe. Yeah, one toe, yeah. Let's, stand on one toe. let's try and start with just one foot flat on the ground. <laughs> I have a feeling she'd have a tough time with that. <laughs> well, you know, she's nine. Children aren't very coordinated yet. <laughs> yeah. So, Some adults still aren't that coordinated. So Ned's like, uh... What the fuck are you doing? <laughs> I'm trying to be a water dancer, Daddy. Serio <laughs> told me that a water dancer can stand on a single toe. For hours. For hours on end. And it's like, well, what toe? <laughs> <laughs> Any toe. Any toe. <laughs> Any toe. Can you imagine them trying to stand on their pinky toe? Oh, my God. Like, I have broken my pinky toe so many times, they don't even look like toes anymore. I can't imagine trying to stand. Oh, boy. Ouch. <laughs> I've never broken a toe, nor do I ever want to. In order, in, I can only imagine, in order to stand on your pinky toe, your toes would have to be completely level with each other. You'd have to have looking feet. Right. And yeah. then you'd have to be able to curl the other toes under. <laughs> I assume she's trying to stand on her big toe. I would assume as much, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'm assuming that that's the toe she's trying to stand on. One of her big toes. <laughs> <laughs> it's the only one that makes sense. Well, they do it in ballet, so... Right, it's the only one that makes sense. That yeah. She'd be trying to stand on her big toe, so I'm going to just go with that. that yeah, she we'll has go the with that. She has the common sense to try to stand on her big toe. <laughs> right. I can't even stand on the balls of my feet, so... Yeah. So, her and Ned start talking, and they discuss Bran. Yeah. And how Arya wants to know, you know, well, can Bran still be a knight? Yeah. And Ned's like, nope. Not gonna happen. Yeah. Can't do, can't do the night thing. Too bad for Bran. Yeah. Sucks to be Bran. But he could be the lord of a castle. Yeah. He could be Bran the Builder. Reincarnated. And build shit. Um, or make other people build shit. Or make other people build shit. Right. Exactly. Be like the engineer. Yeah. Yeah. Bran the engineer. He could sit on the king's council. I, I wouldn't want to sit on Joffrey's council. Right. Well, yeah, but Ned doesn't know it's going to be Joffrey. Right. You know. Well, they w I imagine he would assume as much. Until right, but I think he's thinking maybe Bran would be able to do it when Robert's still in charge. Right, or something, yeah. You know, if Robert lives long enough. Which he doesn't. Spoilers! Which he doesn't. <laughs> and Arya's like, oh, uh, well, you know, yeah. She's like, can I build things? Can I be... Arya the Builder. I want to be a man. <laughs> yeah, I want, to be, I want to be a dude. And Ned's the best like, feminist character. Yeah, in the show, in the books. And then Ned throws water on that fire by saying, "No, no, you're a baby maker, honey." Yeah, you're gonna have to go marry an old man. 
and be his baby factory. And your sons can do those things you want to do. Yes. Yeah, because so, that's what expected of yeah, everyone so, so in So you Westeros. can't, no. But your your boys can. And she's like, well, fuck that shit. Right. Not I don't want to have babies. Yeah, not I don't want to <laughs> sit around and do nothing all day. Yeah. This is the child that runs around the kitchen and plays with the cook's kids. Yeah, absolutely. Yep. Comes home covered in mud. And I can't imagine very many people in Westeros wanting to marry a woman like that. Yeah, but it'd be kind of scary to marry You Arya. never know what day <laughs> your wife's coming home covered in mud or blood <laughs> or God knows what else. She's got hay in her hair. And, yeah. You know. <laughs> oh, Arya. Yep. It'd be interesting, that's for sure. Mm -hmm. For Is there any relevance to the part where George told us that when they got the letter that Bran was awake, they all went down to the... I guess it was the gods. It wasn't the godswood because they don't have a weirwood tree. Well, they call tree. it the godswood, but there's okay. no weirwood tree in it, but it is the godswood, yeah. And they stayed there all night and held the vigil, and Sansa was dreaming of Bran smiling, which Bran will never smile again. Right. But, well, maybe he will. Maybe. Before he gets turned into Bran about 3,000 later on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But, Maybe when uh, he's on his horse again. Well, he smiles when he gets his horse. Yeah. He even smiled when he saw the design for the... That's true. For the saddle, so... Maybe that's what she was seeing. Maybe. But, yes, I think there is never gets to them going to the godswood for that, because Ned holds to the old gods. Very strongly. Yes, and I would assume Arya probably does, too. She doesn't seem like a seven... So, faith of the no. seven type of person to me. That's Sansa. Sansa's got her mother's faith, and Arya has her father's. Yeah, so... So, yeah, I think there was some significance to that. Um, it wouldn't even surprise me if Sansa's dream of Bran smiling yeah. was more of a vision. That's what I was thinking. Yeah. I was, that's what I was thinking. But I, I would have thought that Arya would have had it more than Sansa, only because Sansa's more of a Tully. But she still has just as much Stark blood as Arya does. It, well, Yeah. You know, yeah, Ned said in, in Arya's last chapter that, you know, the same blood flows through your heart as flows through Sansa's. Yeah. So she has the same stark blood. It wouldn't surprise me that she had had some sort of a vision. Yeah. So, I mean, could be a dream, could not be a dream. Yeah, I didn't think it was, I, mean, I didn't think it was a dream. I thought it was more of a vision. I mean, yeah, I mean, early on, like, Bran and John, like, when they're, when they're working into their, go into their wolves, it's described as dreams. Like they're you know they're having a wolf dream, but yeah. So no, that definitely wouldn't surprise me at all okay. if Sansa were having visions that yeah. were supernatural. Yeah, where she could see because the Starks just seem to be all about the supernatural shit. So more so than the books let on. Well, they let on, but they let on very subtly. Yeah, and like I think we would like it. It makes sense that Sansa has the same abilities. It's just we don't see them outright in her because her wolf's dead. Right, yeah. And so, and we don't see them immediately in Arya either because her wolf is gone. Her wolf is gone. Yeah. That makes perfect sense to me that, that she has some sort of supernatural vision regarding yeah. Bran. And since we know Bran did smile. Yeah. And does smile, that, that it's possible that that's what she was seeing. Yeah. I just see Bran bought 3,000 in my head now. Yeah. Hi, Sansa. I saw you being raped on your wedding night, and oh, that was terrible. But you seem so pretty now. <laughs> no, he said he said that she was pretty on her you, wedding You night. looked so pretty while you were being raped. It was fantastic. <laughs> A plus for effort. That's just creepy. That's Brambot. <laughs> oh, that's creepy coming from you, too. <laughs> I'm just replicating Brambot. That's basically what he said. Yeah. yeah. It's still creepy, though. Yep. So Arya's had enough of her dad's um, telling her that... Enough of that bullshit yep. about, about being being a baby, baby machine. Yep. She goes back to practicing her water yeah. dancing with her bloody feet all so over Ned's the stairs. Like, fine. I'll go visit Littlefinger. Well, no. I'll, or I'll go home and Littlefinger will come visit me. Yes. Yeah, Yay. he was had at home. He was washing his face and his hair, trying to cool down. And all of a sudden, Littlefinger's there to visit, or he's sitting in the solar waiting for Ned. Ned to arrive home. Yep. Yeah. Littlefinger's there. Um, Littlefinger provides Ned with some information that most of John Aaron's servants and stuff were immediately taken back to the Vale. 
No, Ned Lysa. assumed they were all taken. Well, Littlefinger but says a that few most, of them were left. but there are a few that are left, yep. Littlefinger tells him. There's a pregnant kitchen girl that was wed because she got pregnant. There was uh, a stable boy. Be a night. You- there was one other one, and then there was his squire. His squire. Why would his squire be left in town? John Aaron's squire. He was knighted right after he died, though, wasn't yes. he? I wonder if they did that to keep him from mm-hmm. talking. Seems wonder if he knew fishy. something. Seems a bit fishy. He was knighted real quick for he someone was. who doesn't know how to fight. Yeah. For someone who shouldn't be a knight, he was knighted rather quickly. Yes. So, yep, that's interesting. Very sketchy. Mm-hmm. So because Ned the squire was... knows more about Lord Aaron's comings and goings than anyone else would. Oh, certainly, because the squire is basically like his like caretaker 24-7. Yep. So, yep. And Ned would surely like to speak with this young Oh, man. yeah, absolutely. I want to know what he knows, but we may not ever find out. What do you mean? Well, once he's been knighted, he's now in the king and queen's employee. So, no. <laughs> isn't he? No. No. I mean... Is that his loyalty now to someone else so he can't speak of no. Lord Aaron? No. I thought that's how it went. No. Okay. But I'm pretty he's, sure a, he's a knight of his own now. Oh, okay. So. But he does die before Ned gets to him, doesn't he? I know in the show he does. Yes, he takes a, a big, big splinter in the neck. Yes. <laughs> during the tourney. Yep. We'll have to see if that happens in the books, too. Well, I know you already know. It's coming up in a few chapters. We'll yeah. have to find out what happens. Yeah. I don't think Ned gets the information from him either might way. Be, it might be a bad day for this kid. Probably is. And then the only other thing of import that we learn from Littlefinger, aside from, hey, you should probably go talk to this guy. Is you don't talk to this guy. Before before I have him killed so he can't tell you anything. Yeah, it's not <laughs> you go talk to this guy. It's send... Send someone of your household guard. Yes. Yeah, because there are spies everywhere. Yes. And there, there's one watching yeah. his tower as we speak. Well, Littlefinger tells us it's a spy. Right, that's true. Again, it's how far do you want to believe Littlefinger? Right. So. You never know who's watching, though. Right. So Littlefinger tells us, like, oh, that boy over there is a spy. Yeah. We have no idea, no way to verify. Right, it could be anybody. Whether or not that's a spy or not. It could be absolutely we're just, anybody. We're just left in the same position that Ned is, which is to take Littlefinger at his word. And I hate to take Littlefinger at his word. Exactly. <laughs> that is a dangerous thing to do. But apparently Ned doesn't think it's such a dangerous thing to do. Yeah, which is so dumb because he was all on the board of not trusting Littlefinger. But because his wife said to trust him. <sighs> yep. He should have trusted his gut. Because she wants Littlefinger's little finger inside of her JJ. <sighs> I... I don't think so, but I think she just I think she's trusting him in desperation at this point. We'll see. But that's just my perspective. We'll see, maybe. Yeah. Maybe we'll find out. Definitely wanted I don't want you to be right. <laughs> I don't think she wanted to at least wanted to, if not was doing the horizontal polka with the little finger. <laughs> <laughs> the hunka chunka. Yeah, I got it. Yeah, I got it. Thanks. <laughs> yep. I got it. But the only other real thing that we learn from Littlefinger's conversation with Ned, aside from everybody's a spy, and I love, I do love how he's like, Ned's like, well, they can't all be spies. Yeah, absolutely. And then Littlefinger goes, well, there's you, and there's me, and there's Robert. And he's like, but Robert tells Cersei everything, so I don't count him. As not a spy. Right. And I don't know about you, so I'm just going to leave myself as the only <laughs> one I can guarantee is not a spy in all of King's Landing. <laughs> he's, and he's a spy. He's, no, he's not. Littlefinger? Nope. No, he has spies. Yes. Oh, most certainly. Or he has green visions. Oh, here we go. Just saying. Just saying. <laughs> I'm pretty sure he has spies, though. If he has the ability to see things... Then he doesn't need a spy. Then he doesn't need spies. But I, I think him being a green seer is a bit of a stretch. Oh, but that's Why? just... Because I haven't read enough to... <laughs> that's not a reason for him not to be a green seer. That's enough reason for me to not think he's a green like, seer Like, I've already right laid now. out the evidence. 
I know, but I haven't read the evidence just because you told me, like, you tell me the world's flat. Am I going to believe the world's flat? Okay, here's what we learned. <laughs> I can show you the page in A Dance with Dragons. I haven't read A Dance with Dragons. Right, but I can show you the page where Blood Raven tells Bran what constitute, like, how to identify a Yeah, cancer. we've had this conversation right. on previous episodes. Small, sickly, tiny, so it green could be little Robert. Or red eyes. So it could be little Robert. And green or red eyes. Robert's got brown eyes. Right. Okay. But we do know somebody who's small and short and not robust, who was sickly as and a child. And little fingers got green and eyes. And who has green eyes. Yeah. And his name would be Littlefinger. It also would make sense that the three-eyed crow, who I think is not the same thing as Blood Raven, right. is a harbinger of evil, like a worker for the great other, the bad guys. Right. Remember that he first visited Bran when he was basically on his deathbed. Right. He first visited Jojen when he was on his deathbed with Greywater Fever. And Littlefinger was on his deathbed. And Littlefinger, at one point when he was a kid, a teenager, yep. was on his deathbed after being nearly killed by Brandon yep. in a duel. Hmm. That's po- it's possible. It's definitely possible. I still have to read. Plus his sigil, he changed his to sigil a s- to a mockingbird. Yes, I was going to say a sparrow, but that and was what wrong. does a mockingbird do? It mimics other birds. Yes, it does. Which means that Littlefinger is in a way saying, I'm mimicking another bird. Interesting. Could it be the three-eyed crow? That's very possible. So, I... I'll have to keep reading, and I'll let you know if I change my mind. You'll let me know in, like, three years. Yeah. (laughs) Okay, when you get through it. No, because I'm reading the other books. Okay. On top of this, I'm not, like, Widow, who's going chapter by chapter. Okay. Because she said that's what she's going to do. But I want to have read all the books at least once before I go back and do it again. I want to try and have them all read at least once. Because because you are the one that's read them multiple times, I want to have read them all at least once. Mm -hmm. And then this will be the second time through for the podcast. Right. And she's just going chapter by chapter. So it's going to take her a few years. Yes. <laughs> take her several years to yeah. get to the point where she can believe my little finger is a green seer theory. Yeah. Or at least has green visions or green dreams. And your other theories, your tinfoils. Some of my other tinfoils. Yeah. I stand firmly behind little finger has, right. at the very least, green dreams and green visions. If not, is a full-fledged green seer. All right. So, I stand very firm by that. And that's okay. Yep. I'll let you know if I believe you at some point. <laughs> <laughs> but, so, yeah. So, we don't we don't learn about Littlefinger spies, but we learn that everybody in King's Landing is a spy. Yeah. Except for Littlefinger. Because he's not sure about Ned, and he's pretty sure that Robert tells Cersei too much. So, he's obviously He probably a spy. does tell Cersei everything, <laughs> yeah. He can't yeah, keep his he mouth gets, shut. Well, because he gets drunk, and then she Cersei get, gets him drunk. Yeah, she gets him drunk, and then she gives him hand jobs. Yep. And then he runs his mouth. Yep. The same way that Catelyn got Ned to agree to be the hand. Pretty much, she yeah. banged him, and then her and Master L- Maester Lewin ran that whole fucking scam on him, and basically browbeat him into be- agreeing to be the hand. Women are bitches. <laughs> you guys, which we couldn't get Widow to agree, that they were in cahoots trying to get Ned. I think they were in cahoots. Um, there was definitely some cahooting going on. Yeah. Like, that... that Note that she got from Mr. Lewin might have just been a dick pic, but it might have also had more <laughs> See, Widow, this is what happens when you miss an episode. I know you're dying, and I'm sorry you're dying. No, we're but- not. We're really <laughs> no, not. She does need to get better. This podcast is not as fun without her. I think it is because we've actually discussed the topic at hand. Actually, I've actually think we've done pretty well this episode. <laughs> but we've discussed I the topic do, at I hand. I do miss Widow. <laughs> it, you know, it'll be very, it, it'll be funny, not funny, if the Widow dies not of her own making. <laughs> Plus, it's very hard to keep the cat at bay yeah. without her here. Yeah, Sir Mouthy is very upset with us right now. Yeah. <laughs> He's not allowed to join the podcast. Yeah, no, he's today. locked in the other room and he's not happy about it. <laughs> Whereas, when if she here, were here, he would put himself in the other room yeah, and not leave it. He'd hide. Right. So, yeah. he senses the evil in her. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> he senses the dark side of the force within her. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> the spirit of the great other. Well, she's killed one too many husbands. Apparently. Or two too many husbands, however many it is this week. <laughs> three, I think, right? She said she was going to marry somebody else and three. kill them, so. Yeah. 
All right. So the last thing we learned from Littlefinger is that the smartest thing Ned has done since is arriving at King's Landing is finger. to not trust Littlefinger, which then Ned just completely, completely ignores and trusts Littlefinger and trust completely. Littlefinger. After Littlefinger tells him flat out, "Do, do not, not trust, trust me. me. Whatever you do, I'm a purple. Pump. Don't trust me." But because Catelyn trusts him, which well, not just that, but like when somebody tells you. Right, it's like it's like reverse psychology. Yeah. When somebody says, "Don't trust me," or all of a sudden they become instantly trustworthy in your mind because look at how honest they—they're so honest. Yeah. They're telling me not to trust them. It's how could yeah. I not trust them? Yeah. It's, it's <laughs> don't think of a pink elephant with purple polka dots. Plus, it's like a, it's like bullshit. a recursive circle, right? Yeah. It's like, don't trust me. Well, then if I don't trust you, then I can't trust you enough to take your advice to not trust you. Right. Which then leads me to trust you, but then I'm not supposed to trust it's, you, and yeah. it's like a fucking it's, infinite loop circle that you can't. And I think I think he says it on purpose just to fuck with Ned. I think he does. Absolutely. absolutely. Yeah, because he definitely wants Ned to trust him yeah. as part of his plan. So like he, he says, needs- don't trust me, so right. you do trust me. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. To fuck with Ned. Yep. So that way he can later on turn on Ned. And oh, yeah, and say, see, I told you not to trust me. Get him me. out of the way. And it's all to cause chaos. It's a chaos ladder. Right, but I think there's another motive to it. He, Littlefinger, wants control of the realm. What other motive is there? It's Don't little, give me that look. It's Littlefinger getting Ned sent to the wall. At the, that's kind of like the plan. Either killed or sent to the wall. Why? Why? Oh, oh the, Catelyn. If, if, thank you. Why indeed would Littlefinger want to take Ned out of the picture? Yes, but do you really think that if Ned was still alive... And just at the wall, that well, he would have a an, chance here's with an inter- Here's an interesting thing. And I didn't come up with this one on my own. Lord of the Greenhand came up with this one. Love I that think show. It's, I think it's accurate. Okay. I've looked at it after I saw their video on it, and it's pretty intense. But they think that it's Littlefinger who... Because of the, his visit from the Three-Eyed Crow. Right. That we think he had. And I still think he had that. Okay. Now, remember, Bran is able to basically, like, interject himself into John's mind. Okay. Later on in the books, when John's having... When John is in Ghost's body. Okay. And he's looking at a weirwood tree, and Bran is, like, in his mind, answering okay. questions that John is asking him in his mind, inside of Ghost. Brain is answering those so inside of John's mind. So there's three brains inside. There's three well, brains inside. Well, brain is like connected to John. Okay. With the like with the abilities that the three eyed crow gave him. Okay. By opening that third eye. Okay. So if Littlefinger opened the third eye, just like Bran did, then he would be able to invade people's thoughts. Whose thoughts do you think he's going to invade? Well, if his goal is to get rid of Ned, and Cersei has promised to send Ned to the Wall. And Littlefinger thinks that that's not good enough because Catelyn won't bang him if Ned's- You think he made Joffrey kill Ned? Yeah. Also possible that he mentally influenced Joffrey to hire the assassin to try to kill Bran. That's fucked up. And yet entirely plausible. I guess. If he's if he's been visited by the Three Eyed Crow, which makes sense, right, and has the Third Eye abilities, like Bran does, right, and Joffrey does these inexplicable things, like yes, Joffrey's a douchey teenager who kills whores, not in the books so far. Okay. Right. Well, you're you have, talking you about have, stuff. You're talking about stuff farther along in the books. Well, and- actually, no, because both of those things have happened. Well, except for Ned, that's a few chapters right. away. But the Bran thing already happened. Right. But yeah, it would make sense then that Littlefinger would, right? Because, I mean, Joffrey, by all rights, would at least be smart enough to take his mother's advice to send Ned to the wall. Yeah, but he's a cocky fuck. He's a cocky fuck, yes, but he's not, he doesn't seem like he's that dumb. Right. So just, you think that someone had control over his mind and. Littlefinger, like, whispered into his brain. Like. The Mad with, King. Off with his head. Joffrey's a Mad King. Well, Joffrey is a Mad King. Yeah. But, yeah, I think it's entirely possible that Littlefinger is manipulating, like, supernaturally manipulating Joffrey. 
That's crazy. Into doing things to right because both of those things further Littlefinger's ambitions. They absolutely of do. causing chaos, causing war, and getting rid of Ned. So he can have a Catelyn. So you can have Catelyn. That is really creepy. Yeah. That is really fucking creepy. Right. Which is also more evidence for my little thing. Interesting. There is a green seer slash green sight character. I'll just have to keep he reading. Has third, he has the third eye open and has the same similar abilities to Bran. So that's my. That's interesting tinfoil. Yeah. That's some interesting Valyrian tinfoil right there. Absolutely. Valyrian tinfoil. Valyrian tinfoil. Uh, all right. Um, so that's the last real thing that we learned from Littlefinger is don't trust me. So Ned naturally trusts him. <laughs> it's right. Like, yeah. It's like when Sir Roderick tells Catelyn he doesn't like to take reverse boats. So Catelyn decides to take boats. <laughs> yeah. Reverse psychology. <laughs> yep. Um, so I guess that's where we're going to pull coverage together and close it up. Yeah. I don't think we have anything more to talk about, really. No, I think we pretty Since much Since we covered actually covered it the chapter. This episode. Yeah. And didn't stray off into Scooby-Doo and Rapunzel and other shit. <laughs> there was not a single Disney reference made. Until this. right then. <laughs> that wasn't even a reference. I was just talking about past. Past references. Yeah. yeah exactly. Not a single Disney reference made. Uh, I'm disappointed in myself. Yeah, I know. <laughs> you did not drop a single Disney reference. Wow. Uh, our next chapter is John... Yeah, John five, John four. I think it's John five. I think so too. I think it's John five. It's the John chapter right after the Ed chapter, the Edder chapter. Yeah, it's always that's John four. John four, where we are first introduced to Samwell. Samwell Tarly. Every hero needs a Sam. <laughs> Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and ask then, are John and Samwell as gay as Frodo and Sam together? They may be. I, I okay. mean, it's cold in the north. Cold and lonely <laughs> at the wall. Just like it was cold and, lo- well, hot and lonely in and Mordor. Mordor. <laughs> <laughs> so, I guess it's possible that John and Samwell are as gay as Frodo and Well, you know, you gotta keep, Frodo and you gotta Sam. have someone to keep you warm in the dead of winter. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy here we go <laughs> so we will catch you guys next time and hopefully widow will be alive enough to join us to join us or at least visit us as a spirit yeah maybe we'll make her do it over skype or something yeah because if she's not better i'm not Bringing the death flu into my house. No, I don't want it. <laughs> I don't want it. I could get too many people sick. Yep. So uh, we will catch you guys next time when we discuss John 4 and talk about Samwell Tarly and John's first Crips of Winterfell dream. Yep. Ooh. That'll be fun. Can't wait. Until then, we'll see you guys next time. Bye. Bye, guys. <laughs>